My name is Janine Wilson, and I am an expert with um, Infinity Pools, also known as Vanishing Edge Pools, and also known as Negative Edge Pools. And uh, today will be a video on the secrets, 10 secrets of building an infinity pool. Actually, there will be more than 10. But let me take the um, position that I do assist homeowners who have problems. I assist pool builders who want to know how to build an infinity pool or need assistance with uh, hydraulic calculations and um, basin sizes especially. But let me take the position of some pool builders who have built many pools, maybe over a thousand, and they start to build infinity pools. Now, some of these pool builders will actually gain um, education and they will integrate this information into their um, knowledge and they would be quite successful. But there is the, the, uh, the majority will actually take on a project that they cannot do. So the reasoning will be something like this. I am a pool builder. I have been in business for 30 years. I have built many pools. I can build infinity pools. I have built thousands of regular pools. So it doesn't dawn on that builder that the infinity pool, which is very alluring, is not as simple as it appears. And I will show a number of different ideas that need to be integrated. And this is just an introduction into how to integrate some of these concepts with the infinity pool idea. Let me start by saying I have a comprehensive list of documents and I also have a comprehensive list of um, videos and audio classes and charts, photographs, all sorts of um, basic ideas which I've just clicked on to open them up and if we go to this library we will see I've opened up many different sections of this library. I have an audio course in here. I have uh, the list of specifications so this is the master sheet that you would want to have educated yourself in one way or another regarding infinity pools. And it's pretty much the protocol. Um, there are some key concepts, which again, I have videos in here regarding the key concepts, the do's and don'ts. I do have a video online which goes over the do's and don'ts. But let's X out of that and let's go back to where I wanted to start today. And that is with this document. So number one, Put the autofill in the basin or in a surge tank. Now, when I say that you put the autofill in the basin or in a surge tank, this is the type of autofill that you would use. Now, how you would install that autofill is something completely different. But this is a Jandy system that has been designed specifically to be placed into the um, the basin or alongside the basin, I should say. So this cross section which was actually taken from my Watershape University book, which was taken from the Jandy instruction manual. So if you want to know how it's installed, you would consult with Jandy or you would look into the manual. Now, this is an autofill system that is the wrong one. It is on the outside of the basin. But let me show you, that is the wrong one. Immediately, that's recognized for me as the wrong autofill system. And if you look at it, it's really, really high up in the basin. So that means that the basin elevation, if you notice that it was running, it should not be running. That water level is, number one, it's too high. Number two, the autofill is the wrong one. And it's a, a regular autofill. That's what was installed on this 25-year-old pool. Fortunately for the homeowner, it was running on a well. Had it been running on city water, he would have really had very, very high water losses. So that's just showing the type of autofill that is normally installed, but it is the wrong one. 
Number two, put the skimmers on the swimming pool or off the swimming pool. Um, you do not install skimmers into the basin. It does happen. Builders will install skimmers to the basin, but here's the thinking behind it. Um, basin water fluctuates. Basin water is supposed to be 12 inches and it's supposed to be way down in the basin. I'll show you a concept of that soon. Keep in mind the skimmer is set for three inches of water from the top of the beam of that basin. It's not going to work because water it will never stay stagnant at three inches. Skimmers are designed for swimming pools. They are not designed for basins. And the only exception to that rule is, let's say you have this enormous basin that has minuscule, and I'm talking enormous, it's like a, a mini pool, and it has minuscule um, movement in elevation to a very narrow, small basin. Then, yes, you could put skimmers onto that, but that's more of a basin slash swimming pool setup. So let me show you in this um, screenshot, I'm going to show you the difference between a defective basin, which will be the one to the right, and the, a right basin, which is <laughs> the one to the left. But anyway, um, so let's just take a, um, a snapshot view of it. You see the one to, the, um, to my actual right-hand side. Well, it's completely filled basin that is a wrong setup completely it also doesn't have the components by components i mean there are five or six necessary ideas that need to be integrated to the basin now the correct one on the left side shows that the minimum operating level is 314 gallons and 12 inches the basin is 68 inches deep. Now, that, that was made that deep because the basin was already built very narrow, and I had to show construction defect and said if the basin were built that narrow, then it had to have been much deeper. They did 24 inches. I said it had to be 68. I used a program, which I'll talk about again later, and I'm showing my minimum operating is around 314 gallons, 12 inches. So out of 68, I'm using 12. And I'm leaving alone 56 inches for evaporative loss, precipitation, rain storage, of course. User displacement, 10 people jump into the pool. Where does it go? Wave action, you know, water's going to go up and down and oscillate all over the place and freeboarding. So there's space in um, there. That area also can be used depending, oh, I'm going to caveat this one, um, water in transit can be part of freeboarding and then the overflow. So this is showing a number of different concepts and it's all under one heading and that is the basin protocol. There is a basin protocol and there is a formula and a program. So number three is um, always have, I'm just going to focus on the basin, always have the basin calculated using the protocol, using the industry standard method. So you always want to do it. Don't do a napkin approach. A lot of builders will take a napkin and then on the back of the napkin, I have one right here, they'll write a formula on the napkin. And then they'll say, yeah, that's what we'll use. I have come across that in construction defect cases and it will not pass any jury whatsoever. So make sure that you're actually getting calculations done. If you can't do them, if you haven't taken a class then or workshop, then get a professional. So this is a static shot of a program that I used from Watershape University developed by Dave Peterson, and that's where I took my classes. And you can see here that it's going to do calculations on the pool, the spa, the basin, and it's going to end up giving us by putting, for me to put in information like 614 square feet of pool, um, basin is 52 square feet. That by the time I get to the bottom, it gives me a graphical design, which you can see here. And on that graphical design, we see that it's going to add all the overflow. Remember the freeboarding, wave action, user displacement, uh, precipitation, rain storage, autofill as well, because you have evaporate, evaporative losses. 
and then um, the minimum operating, which, you know, takes care of vortexing. And that will be on this basin, um, 1,779 gallons. The builder ended up with about seven to 800 gallons. So he was in serious problem conflict. And also not to mention that there was a tremendous amount of water loss and excessively high water bills, of course. Number four, calculate the correct pipe sizes for the infinity pool. So uh, keep in mind that the suction, the return and all that should also be done with a program very similar to the idea I just showed you. Um, certain information is entered into the program and then it spits out the, um, the right sizes or the right basin size and it really helps us tremendously. Dave Peterson, Watershape University did a phenomenal job if you are unable to take the classes and get into synchronization for your next project, then you can call, you can call me and I can assist you with um, the calculations. So again, calculations, 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 very important. Next one, which makes pool builders very nervous, number five, is soil testing and structural engineering. If you think you're nervous about the cost of soil testing and structural engineering and that you know enough not to do it, be very careful. I have um, seen uh, construction defect cases where had the builder spent an extra $20,000 or $30,000, he would not be facing $300,000. So it's a very cheap, um, really is a very, very cheap uh, solution to a problem and of course it's much better for the structure and it's much nicer to know that that structure will last decades if not um, to a century. Number six, line of sight. Line of sight is just the concept that uh, the homeowner wants to look out at the vanishing edge. What will the homeowner see? And this is critical, critical indeed. So it's really important to plan ahead. You don't have like a, a bus there or a um, fence there in the way or the roof of a house, for example. If, if there are roofs and they're okay with that, fine, but they need to know in advance. So line of sight, very important. And also the width of the pool is important to that because you can make the pool wider if necessary to help move that line of sight out further. And or you can also change the spillway. This is a spillway. Water that spills over the edge can be cut a number of different ways. Number seven is homeowner's expectations. So you've got to be very careful that the homeowner knows what to expect, that the basin water will fluctuate 5, 10, 12 inches, 20 inches. That's normal. Um, that the pump needs to be turned on when they jump in and out of the pool. That's normal. Normal things like that. And also the water feature that the homeowner expects needs to be determined and then calculations need to be made for the hydraulics um, so that the pumps perform and that the homeowner sees what they should see as the effect. Number nine is you need more than just a check valve to protect the pool from siphoning into the basin. Look, let's face it, you all if you're, pool construction, if you're in pool construction, you know what a vacuum breaker is. If you're a plumber, you know what a vacuum breaker is. We use them uh, for landscaping and other reasons. To stop the potable water from the house going into landscaping water and then the water from landscaping or pool siphoning back. So we're very familiar with that. It's an anti-siphoning technique. But when it comes to infinity pools, builders don't realize that this pool can siphon its way into here if they use a regular check valve and if that check valve, well, not if, when that check valve um, deteriorates, the water will just siphon in and one day someone will look out at the pool and say, the pool water has vanished. And then they'll look for it and they'll see that the water in the pool is level with the water in the basin. And that's the clue that it siphoned its way out because the wrong check valve was installed. So put a vacuum breaker on. There's a certain diagram for that. It's a very simple um, concept, 
very important and one of the most uh, easy ones to miss. Number 10, reach out to the um, professionals, to the experts if you don't know. If you don't know how to build in uh, vanishing edge pools, if you'd like to start with my uh, courses that I offer, it's very basic. And then work your way into doing online classes with um, some of the other institutes that offer the classes or go to the live events. They're very, very important to, um, to really learn and educate yourself. So that's a conclusion, introduction of some of the secrets of building an infinity pool, at least 10 that I gave you there. And if you want more information or if you have problems with a pool or are in the process of building an infinity pool, contact me and let me know and see if there's anything I can do to assist you. I'm Janine Wilson. I'm located in uh, Houston, Texas, just north of Houston in the woodlands. And uh, I specialize in the vanishing edge pools.